I'm going to be honest, I'm I'm getting I'm getting so tired of Souls like games, especially if this is another 2D platformer. Indie devs could just just make something new. <laughs> know if i can enjoy souls like games honestly but the last one we tried on this stream that was the whole thing was oh it's like it's like a souls game was i think it was called thymasia which for people who have been here for a long time and i i don't expect anyone other than like people that have been around as long as like leo and mike to know this thymasia had a problem where it was fantastic gameplay loop was great like the core combat felt fantastic the world was cool the character design was really cool but then every boss we ran into after I believe the first boss was was a, a, a genuine wall where in souls there are walls, but they're walls that you can, you know, overcome. You, you run into the abyss watchers and I thought we took a lot more attempts than we did at the abyss watchers. For example, we only took like what 15 attempts to get past them. It felt like a lot more. In Thymasia, we were hitting walls of genuine almost, I would compare it to old JRPG, just difficulty spikes of insanity. That is due to the design, if you're not doing enough damage in the small window you get to actually fight back against something, their abilities or structure of the fight itself will kind of nullify a lot of your progress or draw it out to an annoying degree. Every now and then there's a souls like that understands it. A good one would be like Hollow Knight. Or yes, bosses are difficult, but they're not these huge damage sponges. You can you can always have a, a good shot against them, even if you just walk in as a as a level one. Salt and Sanctuary never played it, sadly. I know what it is, I've never played it. I just feel like Souls likes have become the the the, the obvious thing to pursue without taking any like, genuine real risk. I'm of the mentality if I want an actual Souls like, I'll go play Souls. Yeah, that's where I am. If I want to go play Dark Souls, I'm just going to go play Dark Souls. I'm not going to go play your knockoff that you made as a Souls fan that doesn't scratch my itch that I want. I mean, we have one big Souls-like game coming out this year, Black Myth Wukong. I will be into Black Myth specifically because I, I like the Monkey King story. I still think my favorite little abstraction on that story and if you want a really good game to play from the Xbox 360 era, I cannot recommend this game enough. Go play Enslaved Odyssey to the West. It's fantastic. Andy Circus voices the character Monkey in it. Super good. The ending is going to leave you disappointed though because it is it's very philosophic and almost sequel bait and we won't get a sequel. However, the I believe it was the director for Enslaved Odyssey to the West over at I can't remember if it was Ninja Theory or Team Ninja that made Enslaved mentioned that in tone, feeling, and just in its general execution, if he was ever going to make a sequel to Enslaved Odyssey to the West, it would have been Horizon Zero Dawn. So if you want a sequel to kind of fill that hole, if you do play it, go check out Horizon Zero Dawn. I feel like the the reason why I don't like a lot of bosses and boss design in copycats of souls is people don't understand that the bosses in Dark Souls are meant to feel like walls when you first walk in and then as you learn them, they're genuinely supposed to feel overcomable at any point. And every souls like I've played instead of a boss that is well designed that feels like i should be able to overcome it at any point it feels like it's a wall of go grind to level up and then come back and and get good except get good is just level up and do enough dps to get the boss down fast enough or you know get past a certain phase the only souls like i played and had a good time with or yeah and had a good story was hollow knight I love Hollow Knight's gameplay during fights. I, I'm not a fan of the rest of the game, though, sadly. So I didn't get to experience the story. I kind of dropped it pretty quickly. <laughs> Best part of Souls will always be the Metroid Prime storytelling. I, I like how disjointed everything is. It's why Sekiro fells in my mind as a, a narrative delivery. Because FromSoft doesn't do well with just straightforward storytelling. 
I feel like their stories are weak whenever they just try to explain something to you. Because I don't care about the kid in Sekiro. I didn't care about Dragon Rod or whatever it was called. The only people I cared about in Sekiro was the samurai that was voiced by Suda Kenjiro that you meet at the very beginning at the end of the first tutorial. And the showdown that you have with him that I believe you lose. I cared about that and like the big snake. And that was about it. Nothing else really made me interested in what was going on. But in Souls, every Kira, every Kira, every, every character was Suda Kinjiro to me. I see Lotrek of Kareem and I go, who are you? You're weird. You're cool. I see the Firekeeper under Firelink that I, I can't talk to. And I go, you're cool. Y who are you? I want to know more about you. I, I, I meet um, Oswald of Kareem and I'm like, you're cool. Why are you so threatening? But you're not threatening me. Chocobo plushie in the corner, <laughs> so cute. That is, what's his name? Sigma? What's his name? What's this stupid bird's name? This one that made the mount that should be $29, like $37. What's this thing's name? Alpha. There you go.